you're targeting $500 million. You've already amassed the $440 million. What would you selling to people? Why Latin America? What is there? So first, thanks for having us. Uh, I'll tell you that it feels so good to be an entrepreneur again and, and to have finalized my non-compete and be able to do what I love. And as I've shared with you in the past, my passion is in Latin America. It's a great place. It has size. It has great entrepreneurs. It's already created some amazing technology companies mm -hmm. that are world number one. And I think all it's lacking is capital. So, you know, we're lucky that this is our first day of a fund and we've only made a few phone calls and it's nice to launch with 440 million. We should reach our target of 500 million, which is what we're targeting to get it done. And we're proud to partner, not only Shu as my partner in launching this fund, but also to partner with Mubarala who, as you know, Middle Eastern funds have become a deep place for capital today. And the fact that they are trusting Latin America in the growth side in technology to us is something that we're very proud of. I know we want to dig into that in a moment, but Shu, your experience, of course, you mentioned already you've shown that you can pick the right companies. Rappi, you did that over with SoftBank, both for you together with the Latin American fund there, as well as New Bank. What other types of technology are you excited about there? Because everyone's talking about AI. Is it AI or is it really across the gamut of what's being built? The interesting thing about times like now that are very uncertain is there's one thing you can count on is founders. Founders are focused on problems they can solve. And that's what makes them really interesting as an asset class in general in times that are as uncertain as this. And in Latin America, it's not really about the cutting edge. It's about inclusive technologies. It's about bringing technology to people who are deeply underserved consumers and businesses. So it's propagating technologies deep into the pyramid. And that's a real greenfield opportunity across every market in Latin America. It's interesting, Ed. We were just hearing about the money that's behind this. And right. well, last time I spoke to Marcelo was out in Qatar. It was all about Middle East. And it's interesting where the money, the LP money is coming from at this moment. Yeah, so Marcelo, my understanding is you're able to launch because your non-compete with SoftBank for Latin America has expired. So a comment on that. But Mubadal is interesting. Would you guys take money or, or bring in LPs from Saudi Arabia and China, for example? I think one is happy that now we can be back in business. It's a great feeling. And to me, happy that after, you know, an exciting experience of being within the SoftBank ecosystem for many years, I can be back at how it all started in Latin America as an entrepreneur. So could not be more excited as that. As it relates to the initial fund, I mean, we, we, this is the start of a journey and we intend to do a lot more in Latin America. This is our first fund and we thought $500 million is a good way to start. And it's a combination of, uh, of uh, Mubarala, who to me is the premier sovereign fund in the Middle East and my family office and many other investors, including founders from Latin America, founders from the United States. So, so, so far, everybody that we've asked has come through in terms of you know, the potential amount of capital that we need. We really haven't discussed this with any other sovereign funds. And at this point in time, I don't think there will be a need because we pretty much have what we need for this first round. In the future, you know, we're going to look at where the business is, where the pockets of capital are in the case that we raise you know, bicycle capital two and three and four. But now we're focused on one. Yes. We got to go find the founders. We got to deploy capital. And more importantly, we got to make sure that we generate the returns as you know, when people are trusting you with their capital is something that we got to go generate returns. And Shu, good afternoon. Good morning to you from San Francisco. Your friendship, your partnership with, with the guy next to you goes back to SoftBank. They were not uh, an LP or in, involved in, in the raising of this fund. But could you, through Bicycle, invest in any of the startups and names that you were both involved in during your time at SoftBank if they were to raise future funds? Yes, absolutely. Our, our core is to keep good relationships with the entire ecosystem. That includes SoftBank. We have a lot of gratitude to SoftBank. They help put the Latin American ecosystem on the map with our help, and they continue to be great partners. Marcelo, I call the master of momentum. He helps generate the drive to get things done, and then I help execute it. And so we're just playing that role again here, but on our own this time. I like the momentum. I mean, the name bicycle in many ways. I know it comes from the idea of Steve Jobs thinking computer is a bicycle for the mind, but also you guys bike together. Uh, Marcelo, when you're building together, also you've had interesting partnerships. For example, Sheen, that's something that you're helping bringing a big company, a global company, almost the supply side to Latin America, helping the manufacturer in Brazil and Mexico. When you're thinking about the companies you're investing in, you're also thinking about global companies accessing Latin America. What what kind of big companies are you thinking of? How much of the fund would be dedicated to that? 
So this fund is all about Latin America and it's about helping Latin American founders accelerate the momentum that they have because there are great businesses in Latin America, but it's also about helping global companies who have a global momentum to basically land in Latin America. Latin America is close to 700 million people. People in Latin America make four times the amount of money that people make in India. The GDP of Latin America is two x the size of India. So Latin America is a great place if you understand that it's not an easy place to do business. It's complex, taxation and other things. So we plan to invest not only in Latin American founders, but also in companies that are going to go into Latin America. And there are so many companies that, you know, the current geopolitical landscape helps for companies that, you know, want to get into Latin America usually faster than they did before. So excited about bringing companies, bringing, you know, fintechs, bringing companies like Sheen, who basically are disrupting the fashion industry. And there are so many disruptors, like I, I've always expressed, I think the next five years is going to be a world of disruption, not only because of AI, but because of technology. And it's going to change pretty much every industry, every vertical as we know it. And we want to make sure that if anything is being disrupted in Latin America, we have some role to play in that sense. You've been the disruptors before. Vision Fund upended VC in, in a way in, in many people's mindset. The size of checks you would write. Shu, if you're getting into really small companies, but also really large ones and global companies, can the checks be of any size? What are you thinking about where in the lifespan of companies you're going to be entering? It's important to say the ecosystem in LATAM is really good at the early stage. Yeah. They're great funds that have been working for decades to set the foundation. We do not intend to compete with them. So we come in at the Series B and later. Our checks range from 20 to $50 million in any given company. This is not going to be a big portfolio. This is about really choosing a few partners that we can work with for the long term. So we're talking about 10 to 15 companies in the life of the fund. So it's really about a close partnership. And we won't invest more than $50 million in any given company, but we want to have a real seat at the table. So if you want big ownership, you have to go early if you're writing checks of that size. Marcelo, Latin America is more than 650 million people. I get your history with it. But what inside Latin America? Where is the San Francisco or Silicon Valley of Latin America? Is there a Stanford equivalent churning out founders like we see where I am? I want to get some granular detail on where you see opportunities geographically and by which sectors. So a few things. There are so many Latin American founders who actually went to Stanford, who come to Harvard, who come to Wharton, and then they go back. And they, rather than become entrepreneurs in the United States, they basically take that knowledge and take it back to Latin America. And most of the stories that you've seen so far, a lot of those founders were US educated, most of them went to Stanford, and then they go back to Latin America with that entrepreneurial mindset. And that has given rise to a, a booming entrepreneurial ecosystem that's sitting in Sao Paulo, that's sitting in Mexico City, that's sitting in Bogota, in Colombia, because now there are huge stories of success. I mean, you have Rappi, you have iFood, to me, who's probably one of the best food delivery companies in the planet. You've got Nubank, which is a Colombian who emigrated to Brazil, and today is the most valuable digital bank in the world, and the one that makes money, and the one that's worth tens of billions of dollars. You have, now you have the growth, you have Mercado Libre, who's a multi-billion dollar a marketplace that continues to grow. So today there's enough stories of success that have created entrepreneurial ecosystems that have shared employees who are starting a new company. So there's, the, I think what we started at SoftBank was, you know, we took Latin America from one and a half billion a year to close to $16 billion a year of investment along other funds. And that gave rise to a, a booming entrepreneurial ecosystem that right now needs our capital. And I think Latin America deserves a fund that is going to be focused only in Latin America and not the traditional tourist capital that comes in only when good times roll and then they retrench when things are not that good. We're there, we're committed, we're in it for the next few years. I made it a point to focus the rest of my career in Latin America and that's what I want to do. Chu, you are deeply dedicated not just to Latin American founders but diverse founders, minority founders with the SB Opportunity Fund. How much, when we are still seeing, look, an, an environment where interest rates are going higher, where companies are slimming down, where people are wanting to put money into tried and tested founders, how are you able to still focus on a minority founder? Do you, is that priority? Well, the interesting thing about founders who are underrepresented is they have the grit it takes to succeed. They have been overlooked. They are the perfect solution for this moment in time. They do not come from the typical mold. They have had to struggle to get where they are. 
and we like to back those founders because we just think they're unfairly overlooked. So again, it's not about the macro for us, it's about the micro, and the people best suited to navigate moments like this are people in places that are overlooked, people who look like they're overlooked, and if you back those folks, we believe you can make a lot of money.